Hey, welcome back to the Build Show Network. So today, we're out at the Modern Farmhouse and we're gonna talk about trusses, but we're gonna talk about trusses in the sense and this is a particular um, situation where I actually have what we call a cut roof, standard rafters. If you wanna learn a little bit more about that, jump back a couple episodes and catch the roof framing uh, video. You can find out all about what we're doing there, but because this house has such a wonderful view in the master bedroom, we wanted to capture some volume in the roof. And working with the structural engineer and going through the decisions and with the builder, we came up with that we would stop the cut roof, we would then switch to a scissor piece. So, I'm gonna put my life on the line here, climb up the ladder. As you can see here, we have our first truss, and that sits the rafter beyond is the last rafter of the cut roof. And then we have our scissor truss. Now, a scissor truss is simply one that, rather than have that flat ceiling joist, this one has slope, so it actually captures the volume in, this, in the room here. But a couple things to note about our trusses. We didn't just do standard trusses, we had to do what's called a raised heel truss. And we did that by putting this two by six in there. It's typically called a slider in the truss world where it basically just slides in and it splits those two cords. Why? Because I need to match the dimension here of the heel height to the dimension of what's happening beyond with my raft. Now, we're gonna jump back, we'll go back to the office, sit down at the desk, and we'll talk about that in depth, but I wanted you to see it out here at the job site, where these two mix. Now, we carried those roof trusses across the room, but uh, over here, you'll notice as we carry those across the room that we have a jog in the wall. Well, the jog in the wall necessitates that this truss here, the last long truss, then has to get picked up by a smaller truss here. So we had to change the wall height, but we had to make that truss and this truss not only plane out on the bottom inside the volume space of the bedroom, but it also has to plane out up on top of the roof with the roof sheathing out there. And we'll be able to see that again. We're gonna go back to the office. We're gonna talk about these details in detail um, at the drawing table. But again, I want you to see it out here. We'll go back to the office. So stay tuned, catch up with me. We're headed back to the office. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're a first time video watcher of my videos, then welcome and uh, please, Go back in history, look at some of those older videos that I have up. They're not really older. I mean, we're talking months here, but uh, go check them out. And if you're a uh, typical video watcher, well, welcome back. Hopefully you liked what we saw out there. We talked a little bit about the scissor truss, how we married that scissor truss up to a common rafter um, in that cut. And we're back here in the studio. We're going to dive in a little bit. We got our friend here, Big Red. It's always a big help in getting our understanding. We have a building section here that's a section through that bedroom one that we were in. So let's take a quick look at it and just see what we were talking about. So out there, we talked about, here's that truss, top cord, bottom cord, and then here's our wall. And then in here, they had what was called a slider. You saw that in the video raised heel, however, whatever you want to call it, um, energy truss. But the, the, the issue here was that beyond this roof, we had a whole cut rafter system, meaning that we had our traditional, you know, two by 12 rafter that got cut with a nice plum cut. And uh, it went back up to the bird's mouth, across the wall, and then up and was our rafter there. And then the wall was there. Well, that tr or rafter, that had a heel height, right, of some dimension, we'll call it Y, there. So when I set out and I put these trusses in front of it, basically superimpose them on that cut roof, well, guess what needs to happen? We need to be able to match that up because a couple things need to happen. One, 
this sheathing needs to plane out, but this corner needs to match up on the top of the wall there so that we don't have a funky little, you know, additive corner or something there that we're not liking. So we had to be fully coordinated. But most importantly was we needed to get that roof sheathing in the same plane across both roofs as that marched down the roof. So that heel height of Y really set up our heel height of the truss, All right? And so we get that Y dimension there of whatever it was for this one here. I believe it was a, just a little over eight, eight inches or eight and a half inches. And um, we needed to set that. And that way there, when they set the trusses, they can plane out that roof, sheath across the roof, and we didn't have any conflicts in there. So it's not very common. Most of the time I'll either do a trust roof or I'll do a cut roof. It's very rare where we do this hybrid roof. But in this case here, the cut roof worked really well for the house. But when we came out here, we wanted to do a uh, volume ceiling in the room, which is basically just something that's out of the ordinary flat ceiling in there. So we actually gained a little bit of that volume. And in doing that, between the builder and I and meeting and, and talking these things through, we came up with the idea that a scissor truss would probably lend itself to becoming the best solution to gain that volume in the bedroom. And you can see by gaining that volume, it allowed our three windows to grow at the center. And you, you know from some of the previous videos on this particular project, there's some gorgeous views to be had looking out those windows. So capturing those larger windows there was a good effect. That decision that we made, and I think it's a really good um, time to point out, you know, on, on all my projects, I like to work really closely with the uh, building contractor. You know, as an architect, I consider myself a pretty smart guy. I know a bunch of information. But the one thing that I know for sure is it's not a dictatorship, right? These projects are a total team effort. So when it comes to decisions like this, I think it's extremely important to go to the builder and say, okay, well, this is how I think we should do it. This is how we can do it. Here's some possible alternatives. What's your opinion? And then we talk through the pros and cons. We come up with a solution, and then I simply go and I drop the solution. But the main thing about that is, is that the solution that gets drawn up now is has been a community effort, and everybody's bought into it. There's nobody out there saying, oh, this is a dumb idea. Oh, why would you ever do it this way? We were all on board, and then we solved for it, and then we built it, and it worked out perfectly, as you can see out there. So, but I think that's a, a great point for all you younger architects, hey, for all you older architects out there that think that, hey, this is my way or the highway kind of deal. I, I Again, I can't stress enough how successful projects become when you consider yourself just a part of the team. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about this just a little bit further. We just have a little bit more to go. So, so we have that dimension. Why? How do I get that to the trust company? How do I get them to understand what we want to do? So on all my projects, when I do trust roofs, I typically do a series of profiles. You can see here, this was trust B profile. Um, the other thing to understand is I'm not designing the truss, right? Trust design for illustrative purposes, trust manufacturer responsible for the design. And I say that because there's certain loads that are migrating through these trusses and there's a reason they stand up because they're structurally designed to do certain things and they have the software to do that. What I'm trying to give them is what are the most important pertinent information that describes my design intent? Then they're going to work up a design, they're going to work up a series of shop drawings, and they're going to send those back to me. I'm going to review them, okay them, and then the builder is going to purchase those trusses from that company based on those shop drawings, and they will get built to the specifications in those shop drawings, and then delivered, and the builder will install them. So what are those intentional um, dimensions, right? Well, a couple of things. One, we know it's a 24-foot span out to out. 
we knew that our overhangs were 18 inches and we knew that we were going to, you know, eventually we'll, we'll cut those off and clean that up by an inch and a half or so. We knew that our bearing was seven and a quarter of an inch on each side. So we had a two by eight wall. Um, we also knew that the rise and run of our top cord was nine and 12. And we knew that the rise and run of our lower cord, which is usually half of the outside number, although it can be modified differently. But in this case, we were good with the four and a half and 12. So drew that up, basically the outlines. I filled it in just basically to be illustrated to say, hey, this is a truss. And then I gave those dimensions. So from the top of the plate, to the top of the ridge, we we're 4, 3, and 5, 16 the height of the truss, 9, 8, and 5, 8. But then here's that little baby that we talked about, All right? That heel height, 8 and 5, 8 is the number. So it was a little bit more than half, 8 and a half inches. Um, it was, in fact, 8 and 5, 8. So that 8 and 5, 8 was the heel height to get that 2 by 12 beyond to be coplanar on that top roof plane with these trusses. So there you have it. We took this beautiful house. We have a series of cut roofs and then we married it to a scissor truss over the uh, owner suite on their bedroom so that they can get their volume ceiling. We had that meeting with the builder. We came up with our solution, we drew it up, we sent it out to the trust manufacturer. Trust manufacturer sent back shop drawings for us. We have both reviewed them, the builder and I, verified it, had them built, builder installed them. We did not have any problems with it. Everything married up just like it should. So that's what we call teamwork, right? So anyways, Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you got a little something out of this. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I suggest, hey, take a little walk back in time. Go look at some of those. Um, there's a whole bunch of great information. Got some great projects going on. In the future, we have a whole bunch of stuff coming out that's just very exciting. Can't wait to show you guys and gals. Beyond my videos on the Build Show Network, don't forget about my colleagues. You got Matt out there. You got Jake. You got Brent. You got... Um, Wade from WKP Construction down there in uh, Newport. And uh, they're all just doing exceptional work. Got great videos, little tidbits of information. And, and a lot of it is information you're not going to find anywhere, right? We're, we're all professionals. And, and I, I think the, the biggest part of what we do in these videos is, is that there's a, a really strong legitimacy, right? I mean, the, this video that we're talking about, these trusses, the, the, these trusses got installed weeks ago, not years ago, not 10 years ago, and it wasn't somebody else's work. This is real-time live building that's happening on my projects and that we bring to you and we have real live solutions that we apply to these problems. So anyways, go check out those past videos. Go check out my colleagues. We enjoy having you on the Build Show Network. Until next time, Big Red and I are signing off. Long live our buildings. <laughs>